so I have a question for you. What yes. is your opinion on um, immutable distros? What, what do you th it, what do you think about that stuff? I have been kind of getting interested in this topic recently. I, I I don't think it's something I would run on a regular desktop system. Like that's just not what I would want to do. With the exception of a, I was thinking that if I make a capture PC, I'm probably going to run something like Silverblue. Just because it needs to run OBS, and that's pretty much it. And, you know, you can install the flat pack. Um, right. I think it it opens up a, a really interesting way to work with a distro. So, you sort of... The thing that I'm interested in is the, the shift of focus on where the customization is. Now, the tooling isn't there to make this easy, but... You don't customize the distros like that once you've installed it. If you want to customize, you can actually make a custom image and then go and install that. And there's actually projects like um uh what fuck what was it called? Kinoit? Is that it? That Kino White, yeah. Yeah, Kino White, whatever. Like, I always um, pronounce the name wrong. Um yeah. and there's projects like uh, there's, I think it's like Martin Pitt's workstation or something like that, or Pity workstation, where it takes an existing Fedora Silverloo installation and then replaces it with a new image that's this like Sway desktop with development tools, things like that. I think that is the most exciting thing from from my perspective. The idea where rather than, you know, having to build up this distro and make this weird install script to install everything, you could generate an image and then just stick that image onto a new system, and everything you want is just set up the way you want it. That's that's super cool to me. I don't I don't really care as much about the the immutable properties. My main focus is on the image side. So I've used Kino White now on a hard drive for three months. Yes. And I think part of this is KDE's problem, mm -hmm. but it is the buggiest <laughs> ever. And, and I, 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 we spent a lot of time trapping on KDE in this, but you can tell that that project is very early stages. So the the silver blue is much more stable and reliable than the KDE version of it. And the thing is, is that from from the immutable standpoint, I found it okay mm. i think one of the reasons why now that i'm on fedora that i've been using flat packs more and more is because of my time on kino white because you install everything from a flat pack there unless you you know you can't you know what i mean and then you does you install... i know silver blue supports overlay packages does kino white support that as well well they you can basically install anything from the fedora repos that you want as long as okay yeah uh, as long as they're available to rpmo austria or whatever it's called mm. um there are certain things, obviously, that j just won't work. Like, if you're installing something... That, basically, anything that's going to affect the root file system. So, anything that... Yeah. Like, if you want to install, like, D-Menu or something like that from the Fedora repos, uh, you can't do that because it puts it in OPT, right? And that ah. is in the root directory, right? So, um, you can obviously build that from scratch and put it in the home directory .config or whatever. It worked perfectly fine. But yeah. you can't do it from the, the repos because it, all that stuff is put in OPT. Mm, um, okay. And... That was where I, I never really ran. The thing is, is that when it come, came to a software perspective on Kino White, I never really had a hard time getting the things that I wanted to use there. Right. Um, right obviously, right. I was never going to like be able to install i3 or anything like that. But as long as I was happy with the image as it came to me, mm -hmm. it was fine. So I was able to install the pro programs and stuff like that. Most of the stuff is from Flatpak. Mm -hmm. And then when you can get like BTOP or um you know whatever you just go to rpm austri and, and install it the weird thing is of course having to reboot your computer in order to actually use that thing mm. it made me feel like i was on windows um but if you are so if you anything you have to install from the terminal with rpm austri you have to reboot afterwards because it, it would affects, modify the uh, image right yeah. and it was okay basically what <coughs> excuse me basically what you learn to do is have like an install software day ah, and you yeah. install all your software all at once and then you reboot your computer. Um, that's the way I just ended up doing it. Like I kept a list of the things that I wanted to install and just did them all at once and then rebooted my computer because 
it's on a it's on a separate hard drive in this machine that I'm on now, and I have to get into deal with boot menus and stuff like that. It, it's just kind of a mess to get into there. Um, and it, it was a fine experience. The immutable part didn't really bother me as much as I thought it was going to do. I'm not sure that I'm happy with it being considered the future. I'm mm. not. I'm not, sure, I'm not. I'm not sure if I'm on board with that yet. I think it is very interesting what you were talking about. Like I can see tools that will allow you to build your own image in the future where those big things become more popular. Like say I want to build a I3 version of silver blue and uh, you can do that. And then it will do the ISO thing for you. I'm not sure <clears throat> that we'll ever get there for all the, the little pieces of Linux that we all enjoy mm. right now. So be able to install like the random like hyperland uh, window manager. Like have you been getting the hyperland you... comments as well? <laughs> so, I have, and I'm like, I, I tried it, and then it doesn't work very well in a virtual machine. Like, right. it just, it, it doesn't work very well in a virtual machine. So like, I can't do a video. I, like, I know that all the problems I'm having with it are mm. because of this virtual machine. I can't do a video and crap on it because it doesn't work well in a virtual machine. And I'm not in a position right now where I can put it on a piece, a piece of actual hardware. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah I have it all the time like along with the gen 2 and linux from scratch comments hyperland mm -hmm. has been right up there um install gen 2 not gonna do it again <laughs> never ever ever will i touch linux from scratch okay i watched your some of your live streams never gonna do that I, you're a masochist i don't know what's wrong with you um uh so well, you just, just answered it <laughs> like, like that's just i mean uh, that, that's a whole nother conversation and uh, i think people i mean I can understand if you want to learn all that stuff, mm -hmm. it'd probably be really good. But if you're, I mean, you'd never want to do that with the expectation at the end of it, you're actually going to use it for sure. like a yeah. daily drive. Um, but I think that a lot of people who leave those comments expect you to do that. Like some guy told me to, could you live in Linux from scratch for a month? Like <laughs> it would take me a month to build it. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, like, it's just, I, 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 I'm not Linux smart enough probably to do it. Like, I'm sure it has really good documentation, but mm. my ADD would m mix up numbers and stuff like that. I would follow things out of, you know, it would be a disaster is what yeah, I'm yeah. trying to say. Um, I have no clue what I was talking about earlier, so. <laughs> um, I got distracted. Image tooling. Oh, the, the um, Kino White else. stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I like so I'm not sure if it's I'm ha I'm on board with it being the future. Yeah. Um. I, I've heard a lot of people say like, oh, this is the way Linux is going, and e every distro in the future is going to be immutable. And I think from a certain perspective, like if if you're going to put this on uh, workstations at an enterprise, it makes mm. a hell of a ton of sense. Yeah. Like yeah, you, like this person can never ever not only not only can I install this on every machine and have it be exactly the same. Uh, I can do updates to them and it'd be continually be mm. exactly the same. And add on top of that, things, tools like toolbox will allow developers to get in there and basically create whatever environment they want do their, basically it's WSL on Linux. You know, you mm. can install your own distros right there and it will just work really well. And that stuff all makes sense from a developer's point of view. Like if you're mm. a developer, even this makes a lot of sense, but for the guys like me and you who like to tweak stuff, like to install random packages, uh, things that you might have to interact with the root file system like on a daily basis. Mm. It's going to be guys like us that are going to have a big problem with that because we want to do those things, and in, because it's immutable, you can't. Mm. You know what I mean, once you once you've installed it, that root file system is not your thing anymore. It's entirely the purview of the package manager and the distro itself. You know, and that's okay. But I don't know that it's necessarily for me. 